Welcome back. Once again, I'm Susan Cheplick. And I'm Matt Cheplick. Today we're going to be covering the seventh lesson from Jesus of Nazareth, along with the seventh clip of the movie. Halfway there. <laughs> Uh, the clip today is going to open with the introduction of Mary Magdalene, who's, um, if you're not familiar with her, she's going to be a very significant player moving on, so pay attention to her. She's essentially living in sin at this point. Um, but she's reminded that she should go and see Jesus, because Jesus came to call the sinners. Um, he's not here for the, the righteous, but for the sinners. Um, so she's kind of sent, she, she kind of leaves the scene being sent to him. Following her introduction, just I'll throw this out there. There's the casual introduction of Joseph of Arimathea, who um, maybe I've just seen Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade one too many times, but um, my ears perked up when I heard his name. So once he's introduced, we kind of get into the the meat of the story. Jesus is um, speaking to everybody, and he's covering the subject of anxiety, which. It's huge for me. I know I'm a super anxious person. I don't know about you, Mrs. Chetley, yeah. but I get anxious a lot. So um, I've always found this this passage comforting. And I hate to like be a you know chapter and verse type person, but I'm actually going to read this to you. Um, this is Matthew chapter six, uh, verses twenty five through thirty four. I don't know if that's going to be on a test or anything, but uh, Matthew chapter six, verses twenty five through thirty four. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the sky. They do not sow or reap. They gather nothing into barns, yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more important than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add a single moment to your lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothes? Learn from the way the wildflowers grow. They do not work or spin. But I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? So do not worry and say, What are we to eat? Or what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. Okay, a lot to unpack there, so let's talk about it a little bit. First, the, the easy way to misinterpret this scripture is to just say, oh, I don't have to worry about anything. Just, you know, God will take care of it. I can just kind of float along. Well, that's not true. I mean, and... And they acknowledge, you know, scripture acknowledges that's not true. Um, you know, you, you have a role in it. Basically, you don't want to let these earthly things, worrying about your clothes or, you know, having this or that to, to overtake your life. You don't want to become a slave to those things. Um, you want to keep your focus on the kingdom of God. How do we do that, right? You know, I mean, it's one thing to say that, it's something else to do it. The Benedictines have a motto, ora et labora, okay, prayer and work. So what St. Augustine says, pray as though everything depended on God and work as though everything depended on you. So what does that mean? That means that you pray for God to, to help you, you ask God to help you, but you work your, you know, as much as you can to make sure that Whenever God has, you know, wants you in a certain opportunity or in a certain position, you're able to do that. So when God has an opportunity for you, you want to make sure that you're capable of stepping into that opportunity. Um, and some examples I've seen of, of God working through my own life. Um, you know, whenever I finished school, you know, I was in a situation where I thought I had this great job lined up. And it, it wasn't there. And then all these other jobs seemed like they were going to work out, and for whatever reason, none of them being my own fault, were they available to me. And then because I had worked hard in school and put myself in a position to be in, a, a, in the job that I'm in now, a door opened to me in a position I'm in now, which I was able to take, um, and now I spend every day helping people. Um, so because I worked hard in school to make sure I was ready when 
God needed me to step into that role, I was able to then step into that role, if that makes sense. So you want to always trust in God to put you in the situation you need to be in. Focus on the kingdom of God and, and doing what you need to do, um, but working to make sure that you're always ready. Um, and if you're ever looking for an example of God providing for people that are focused on the kingdom of God, I don't know what social media you guys use. I use Twitter because I'm an old man. Follow some nuns. <laughs> you know, it's, it's silly to say, but you will be just constantly filled with examples of God providing for needs. Um, just last night I was on Twitter and I saw a nun post about um, before bed, she was in prayers and thinking how nice it would be to be able to make spaghetti and meatballs for the convent the next day. Just because, you know, it was cold and people were kind of down and she thought it would perk everybody up. And she wakes up the next morning, comes downstairs, and somebody had donated all the ingredients for spaghetti and meatballs. Um, and she just talked about how it's amazing how the, the Lord provides for such things. So, so the next story that we're going to see... Um kind of has a connection to, to that in that we need to watch what we attach ourselves to. Um, so Christ is kind of leaving that crowd and walking, you know, to the next location and a rich young man approaches him and he says, Christ, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, you know, keep the commandments. And he says, well, I've been doing that my whole life. So Christ looks at him and says, sell what you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. And that will give you eternal life. Um, and the man just looks at Christ and ends up walking away disappointed because he just can't do that. Um, so I think our first instinct is to look at that and say, well, I don't think I could do that either. Um, it's kind of a big challenge. And it's important to remember that you know, some of us might be called to go live monastic lives, but not all of us are called to sell everything that we have and give it to the poor. Um, because if you look at Christ's teachings, he doesn't across the board tell everyone he encounters to give away what they have and follow him. So um, he just sees in the young man how attached he is to his possessions. So as you're watching this and you see the disappointment on the young man's face, um, Try to think about what it is in your life that you have that attachment to. You know, every examination of conscience you've done, probably since your first reconciliation, is based on the Ten Commandments and, you know, I am the Lord your God, don't put any idols in front of me. So what are the idols that you're making in your life? You know, God really should be the first thing we think about every day and the last thing we think about before we go to bed. What is taking that place in our life? What are we putting before God? And those are the things that we need to detach ourselves from and make sure that our number one focus is God. Um, I know it's a struggle that I have in my life. I absolutely need to make more time for prayer. And it's so much easier to sit down in the morning and scroll through social media when I'm having my cup of coffee than open up the Bible or have a conversation with God, you know. Um, does that mean that I have to completely give up social media? I mean, maybe. Maybe I just need to order my life so that God is number one and put Him before everything else. So I think that ties to um, what Matt was saying about, about not worrying about things, um, but making sure that you know, you're letting God in control of where He's leading you. Um, so the final scene that we're going to talk about in this section, you're going to be introduced, well, not introduced to, I think you've met Judas um, in a, earlier in the movie, but this is when he comes to Christ and really becomes an apostle. And Christ is going to say to him, a tree is known by its fruit. And I was really intrigued, he just, it's a one-liner in the movie, so I decided to look up where that was in the Bible, so I'm going to get my scripture out today as well. And it's Luke chapter 6, 43 through 45. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person 
out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of a store of, good, of evil produces evil, for from the fullness of the heart the mouth speaks. Um, so when I read that whole passage for the context, I just felt a really big connection to the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how you guys are going to be confirmed and you're going to have this outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it's really up to you. You can choose to be open to them and to pray for the Holy, to the Holy Spirit to increase those gifts in you. And if you do that, then those gifts are going to bear fruit and bear good fruit. Um, or you can walk away after you're confirmed and shut that part out of your life and let evil grow in your heart. And then you're not going to bear good fruit. So I think it's just so important to remember as you're preparing for this sacrament that you have a role in it too and you really need to remember to be open to the Holy Spirit and open to the good in your life 